Hello and welcome back. Um, it's Franz Cantor here, cartoonist, uh, illustrator, tune talker, teacher, Tinker Taylor soldier spy. And um, I'm here again. I'm going to draw another caricature. And uh, this is a little rough sketch I've just done, um, just so that I can work out the shapes, the basic shapes. I am uh, going to draw this fellow here, which is you probably recognize as Mr. Miyagi. Uh, his real name is Pat Morita, and I've had the pleasure of meeting Pat. Um, was a great, uh, a great um, dinner with, with lobster, actually. Um, so uh, this is I'm kind of transfer. What I'm trying to do is transfer the. I've just noticed there's an error there. Transfer the sketch, the rough sketch, to the. Um, the final paper, which is the Strathmore, this Strathmore grey paper. I just want to, um, what's uh, troubling me about a lot of these shapes is the perspective uh, that I'm a little bit wary of. It's when you, it, it, I mean, it's great to sort of do a face that has a three-quarter angle, you know, that you can see a little bit of the side and a little bit of the front at the same time. Um, but it is kind of, it can be fraught with problems uh, because you've got to line things up with perspective. So perspective is a very major concern with, um, you know, realistic um, spatial cues because uh, it's something that we read as humans um, well, not just humans, I suppose, everybody, everything with eyes, with binocular eyes, reads perspective. Um, so what it means is it's like, it, it's a sort of a, a reference that we, we look at to establish um, how far something is from us or what angle that thing is, is rotated in space. So it's a way of um, of creating um, rules and regulations for us to operate uh, spatially. So the um, the other thing I wanted to quickly say, even though that we're looking at drawing in perspective, which is the the head. If you try to think of these little crosshairs, um, the head is a three dimensional construct. So there's a reference to light, which means there's reference to shade. Okay. So you've got to keep that in mind while you're drawing. And with shade, usually there's a reflected light which uh, bounces up to um, break up the shade or give it a little bit of a side light like that. So that gives us sort of a three-dimensional approach to the drawing. So we're using a brown pencil because it's, it's a warm color. It's like flesh tone a little bit, and it's going to help us uh, in drawing using a grey paper because it's meeting us halfway tonally and we're using a white pencil which is a prismacolor this is a terracotta it's also a prismacolor I'll get a bigger one there you go and uh, we'll probably be using a black pencil just to mix things up we'll just use a, another brand which is a polychroma which I've, I usually use because it's quite quite black and a little bit harder than the than these pencils we also might be using uh, like a pump action, um, what's this, this is an iron lac uh, paint marker which is black and of course the uh, poskis which are a bit rare as hen's teeth at the moment. Poskis are white, so white paint pen and a black paint pen. That's just to help out the contrasts, okay, but basically the, the basic drawing will be done in three shades, three pencils, brown, white and black. Okay, so the other thing that I just wanted to quickly say is the um, this area here, we'll use a purple pencil. This area here, they call the, the mask, right? Or the T-zone. It is actually quite important because these features 
uh, relative to each other, okay? So you really need to look at the proportions within the, this, this area. You can change the shape of the T-zone, and that changes the relationship slightly, but just keep in mind that the relationships that you're building, you really need to focus on their relative um, details. So how it, it's, not, it's not just a matter of how far things are apart from one another and whether or not you can extend them. You have to extend them in relation to you know, everything else. Okay, so especially like things that you make big, you have to look at how that affects the other elements in this T-zone. Right? Things that are big, things that are small, things that are spatially far apart or closer together. Concentrate on this area. This is uh, how we... Um, this is how we, we read faces. We look at these elements first. Okay? All right. So... Let's uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to lighten this zone a little bit because I'm still not happy with the position of the eyes. So um, here's another shot of Pat, which would give you a good uh, indication. She's got these sort of teddy bear, um, you know, hair on the side. Um, so this is his character that he he um, performed for the Karate Kid. Mr. Miyagi, um, he didn't have a little beard in when he was in Happy Days as uh, as um, as Arnold. He's a really he's a lovely guy, and I was quite uh, moved um, by his uh, his personality. He's really nice um, gentleman. He's a gentleman. Um, he was, uh, of course. He's, Unfortunately, no longer with us. So there's some things here. What's going on here? There's some shapes which I need to re-establish this T-zone. As I said, this is the area that we're going to... It can create problems. It can create issues if you're not aware of it. Uh, one of them is... Um, the relationships between the elements. Okay, so you need to really look at the reference and decide um, how to how big to make things and how small to make other things, etc. So just look at the details. Don't look at the at, at outlining things or symbols of things of lips or whatever. And you know you have to be sensitive to. Um, you have to be sensitive culturally, I think, to you know uh, depicting people that you're not uh, that familiar with, uh, like the shape of elements, shape of faces and eyes and lips and noses, etc., etc., etc. So just try to be true to the reference. Okay, put down what you see, not what you think you see. All right, so you're just building up relevant details within a shape that you're happy that uh, you can probably create. There's some beautiful lines in the in his hair and his eyebrows over here. His eyebrows are very very expressive, and I want to be able to capture that in the caricature. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a lot of it. It's, um, there's a lot of uh, directions and changing directions in caricature. So that's the challenge of it. Okay, so it's a part. It's a game. So you have to get into the swing of the game. Okay, you can't just, you know, run in there and get a goal. Very few people can do that. It's just a matter of understanding the play of the field. And that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to work out what is relevant here in Pat Morita's face. What can I, what shapes can I extend to and play with 
and then you know uh, get in and create the details that I want to do I want to put in so, uh, you know a lot of the uh, a lot of photographs are not very detailed in terms of their I mean they're quite blurry aren't they so you've got to try to read details in back into the the photograph and these are done by looking at stuff like you know, errant hairs that that, uh, that cover the um, the head, and that give the character detail, um, characters characteristics, details that give the character personality. That's what I wanted to say. So again, look at the perspective and how things line up, right? So because the head is rotated. Uh, try to think of any uh, equatorial, li equatorial lines, any horizontal lines around this spherical object. Okay, They're, if the head is tilted, then those lines are tilted, aren't they? So look at that and keep them in relation. You don't want to have, unless there's a particular reason for it, you know, eyebrows and eyes tend to line up, right? Even on a sphere, keep them relative. So his head is also it's rotated and it's also slightly tilted. So it gives it quite a, a quizzical um, expression, which is nice. You know, it's kind of, uh, it's endearing to see somebody um, obviously have a, a, a sense of humor and that sense of humor shows in their face and in their expressions. And if they're lucky, like Pat, those expressions form lines. Sometimes we call them things like laugh lines, right? These are like wrinkles that show up after hours of days and weeks and months and years of, of laughing of smiling you know I wish I had that ability to form laugh lines around my miserable puss because it's like um, <laughs> I don't look very happy have a look at this that's me I don't look happy anyway I am happy but I don't look happy I think you know because I think too much maybe that's the problem we think too much so um, have a look at the lines and the muscles in the face and how they continue on, right? So the brow lines continue on to the temples, etc. Um, and how deep are they and how relevant are they in the overall scheme of things? You want to be able to get a nice likeness and texture that uh, looks like skin and it looks like Mr. Miyagi, you know, because let's face it, that's, you know, that's his, his main uh, character. We'll talk more about that as we go. I just want to try to get a handle on the likeness before it escapes me because uh, it's a lot of things we're thinking about, you know, with the light source coming in from the top left, obviously. Um, That'll establish some nice, uh, some nice rules for us. So I don't. I, th I think most of us have seen um, the Karate Kid movies, and um, you know the the new remake doesn't really. Although uh, nothing against the actors, I love Jackie Chan, but I think it, it was kind of. Um, obvious that you know that the role wouldn't really be the same wouldn't really be as suited as uh, Mr. Miyagi it was good but you know wasn't uh, wasn't the same depth I think the same level of um, Compassion and character. It was a different character. He played a different type of character. So, 
I felt. That's my impression anyway. You might have liked it. That's fine. I hope you did. So wrinkles are things that form after years of, you know, pulling faces, which is essentially, you know, what we what we're looking at here. Um, muscles around the face are, are, are they create. Um, oh, there's a lot of. Uh, you have to care, be careful about. You know, lines are relative. Okay, so wrinkles and lines are relative. So you have to sort of. It's good in a way that you're using a brown pencil because when you come to outlining the, the lights and darks of the face with a black pencil and a white pencil, right, the brown pencil is a little bit more forgiving. So it's okay if you put in a lot of wrinkles that you need to knock back. That's fine. So... Um, I'm looking at uh, this, obviously the T-zone. I'm focused really, really hard on this. There's a curve up here at the bridge of the nose. Uh, not the bridge, this part of the nose, which goes down to form the bulb of the nose, which is like an onion. So this is the bulb, but there's a, there's a mass of flesh just above it. And there is a slight curve downward away from it, so it's not like it's not like this, okay? It's not what this is. I mean, you can do that, but I'm actually seeing a really com a really uh, compound curve, like a quite a quite a different curve in the nose itself. Which is, uh, you know, this is m me picking it up. This is a characteristic that I can see. So think of it, you know, when you shade it, right? It's still got to look like a nose and it's got to look like his nose. So the more character, I look for lines, I look for angles, I look for curves. So it's not just a matter of finding the schnoz, you know, a nice round curve. No, no, no. It might have a sharp uh, accent to it. You know, it might. Um, cheeks might be round and then, you know, sharps. And sh sh look, f look for angle variants and like different angles, variants, but also the variants of, sh of shapes itself. So smooth shapes, round shapes, sharp shapes, straight shapes, all of these make up a... Um, a complex uh, drawing and that's what we want to get. We want to be able to detect differences in shapes to give the the whole piece variety. Okay? Um, and having that variety tends to give it more interest, so it's more interesting. So here we go. Uh, we're getting into my favorite area. It's got this beautiful um, lip expression that, that I want to get and uh, it, it's kind of like a really naughty um, a really naughty smile it's kind of like a smile that you're trying to hide and I th he's kind of tr he's almost hiding it under the mustache but not quite the mustache is not long enough to hide it Really nice mustache. It's a, a like a soup strainer, so it could it could strange soup for sure. Really nice, um, characteristic, very beautiful characteristic uh, element. You know, um, you know, Pat Morita is an actor. He did a really good job on Mr. Miyagi. Really good job. You, you know, you can feel for it. It's like at no time while you're watching The Karate Kid are you aware that he's an actor. You're just aware that, you know, this is a really odd little guy, and uh, but he has a message, a beautiful message. And um, that's what we get into, and that's what we touch. So we're, we're touched by it. We're moved by, by that, uh, that message. 
which is the, you know, that's the actor's ability, really, isn't it? He's a good actor. Okay, so coming down, and there's some stray hairs coming off the chin a little bit. I don't know whether, no, I'll leave the, I'll leave the hair. I was going to put hair on that side, but I don't think it's going to destroy this beautiful um, curve and straight effect here. So I don't want to do that. What a wonderful face. <laughs> it's funny talking about some someone's face. What a wonderful face you've got. I wish he was alive that I could I could actually uh, say that. Um, so I met him through a friend, and uh, he was in Australia, and I think he was promoting a f uh, the series. I think that or the new was a new film or something on video. And he came out to promote it, and I was uh, lucky enough to catch up with him. He was very gracious, and you know, we went out and hung out at, um, I think it was the Rocks or Darling Harbour, I can't remember. Um, and you know, and during the meal, I mean, he's quite, he, he actually, um, I think he shaved his beard off, but he, he looks, absolutely in character that's him you know he's, he's playing somebody in character um, it's part of his personality I think that's I think that's why you know this character became so special for them um, and uh, certainly for Pat and I'll, I'll tell you now there were people coming up um, humbly, you know, asking for an autograph or a photograph, or, uh, a, a, a selfie with him. And uh, he was always gracious and um, willing to comply, you know, because it's, I don't know, it's just something, he, and he even remarked on it that, you know, it's, it gives him pleasure. It gave him pleasure to, to do that. Um, it wasn't an interruption. It was, well, it was an interruption, but it was like, he didn't mind doing that because, um, you know, it gave him pleasure. The character that, that he, he, he created, Mr. Miyagi, um, he just loved that character. He really loved this character, adored the character, and in many ways put so much of himself into Mr. Miyagi to give it that extra layer of truth, you know. Some beautiful hairs that, that he's... You know, allowed to spin off. Uh, it's got these sort of koala type tufts on the side, which are, you know, again, really, really good to to draw because they're made for pencil hairs, aren't they? Hair and fur is wonderful to draw. Um, so, you know, it's just something that you can really get get a handle on with a pen or a pencil because it's just like it just looks like when you draw these lines they look so um, effective they look so cool so before I move down I have to be careful moving pigment pigment uh, back and forth across the um, So I'm just putting in a word balloon with his uh, with his um, famous line from uh, the Karate Kid one, which is "Wax on, wax off," which refers to the body. He was trying to, you know, put these. Um, um, physical actions so that they feel natural and he made um, uh, um, comparisons to you know waxing the car that sort of rounding round movements so those round movements have a relevance to the um, karate Okay, so um, it's not really 
centered there, but we'll leave it. So yeah, he's uh, you know his face has got these beautiful um, character lines, and the character's cheeky. He's very very cheeky. So what does that mean in 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 a character? How does that apply to us? So we're drawing his face. Well, th these are expressions, right? So they have a relevance in the in the way that they create lines, and the lines are the story uh, that we're trying to tell. Um, with Pat Morita's face. So everything here, the uh, putting in the suspenders and the shirt and things. Uh, I don't know how, to, I'm not putting a lot of details into that area because it's not what we, what we want to do. But um, having some details in there are, are helpful. So, uh, I've got to do this. Sometimes you get carried away with uh, with the drawing, you forget elements. Okay, so there's obviously a shadow that's going to come down here for most of this. Um, It's important to refer to drawing sculpturally, sculpturally, three-dimensional drawing. It's very, very important. So you're considering light and shade, you know, and their, and their relevance. So have a look at the expression, have a look at the overall impression that you get, right? And, you know, um, what I like to do is to keep these lines like hatch lines. You know, you can even cross hatch if you wish. Um, so they're not you're not trying to, to create a, a airbrush effect with a pencil okay it's still nice to have that rough quality so we've got a lovely um, mullet style tail that's coming off the back with some lovely curves and ah, compound curves as well so I want to get a lot of this character See the character, the curls themselves, right? So that it's straight hair, but it's hair that's been teased a little bit by overcombing, maybe. Yeah, that's kind of nice. All right. Um, oh, we we'll, may as well start to. Oh, we'll leave that for the white pencil. I think the name underneath. So um, we're going to get into some details here with a black pencil. Um, and uh, we may be here for a while because, you know, I'm getting really into this drawing. I really love this face. It's a beautiful um, expression that is very mischievous. And I want to sort of pay homage to, to that expression because I think it is so relevant to his personality that uh, that I can see through the lines right I'm not basing this on you know a night with Pat Morita or watching his films I'm basing this on what I can determine in his face itself so these are lines that I can see and read as certain characteristics that have certain meaning okay that's what I'm trying to to get across lines that that you put down that you discover in the drawing right I mean, nothing in my head it's all found on the paper a matter of uh, investigation okay so I'm exaggerating, of course. There is a little bit of stuff in my head, but not enough to get a, an accurate um, impression of somebody. I need to investigate. I need to look at the lines and to study them, their direction and their impact, how heavy or how light they are in relationship, in relation to each other, right? The shapes, the overall shapes that I'm getting here are complementary to what I see 
It's part of what I see, what I investigate here. These are not shapes that are arbitrarily came up in my head. The shapes that I see. Okay, it's like when you look at an apple, you see a, re- a circle, but an apple is not a circle. It has definition, it has contours, but you still see it as a circle, the impression, a pear. It's an impression of a pear. The pear is much more detailed than that. But it's the, pe- it's the impression, the first impression you get. Remember, it's a sort of a delicate balance between symbol. Your brain is trying to make a symbol of a face, always, right? So that uh, the brain trying to come to terms with what they see in, t- in meaning, trying to create meaning with the drawing to create a symbol which expresses the idea. The brain is a very powerful communicator. Symbols are wonderful, powerful communicators. And they're the basis of all cartoons because cartoons are based on uh, a method of symbols and simplicity, which are kind of like graphic design um, method of communication. Okay, Reducing everything down to its, to its base elements and communicating those base elements because... They're faster and purer to communicate. So, you know, you sacrifice a lot of detail that way in cartoons, graphic design, and symbols. You sacrifice a lot of detail. So the detail that I'm putting back in here in the process of doing a caricature is almost after you come to terms with the novelty, the game of, exp- of changing the shape you know, keeping it simple. Remember, light and loose to start the pencil, to start the project. Light and loose, right? But you're creating, um, you're creating a new shape, a new, a new playing field. And then when you put the ball in play and the players in play, all of these lines, right, you play a different game. So it's an interesting game that you're playing here. Right? It's very, very interesting and you may not be aware of it. You may not be aware of how powerful this um, process is that you're you're doing with a with a drawing. Um, and I'm just adding the because it's a little bit cold with a black pencil. You've got to sort of give it a little bit of help. I don't want to over overstep the black here and create a, a lot of uh, unnecessary uh, contrast yet because I'm still in the process of. In- investigating these shapes okay being very aware that um, you know what they are right the the for example the eye is a certain shape the eye is a shape don't just cr- think of the eye being a symbol it's not the eye has a definite um, shape and the shape is it means something so there's a a lid and there's an underlid and there's an eyeball that it falls on and there's a reflection of the upper of that lid and the eyelashes onto the eyeball surface and there's a whole lot of things you have to think about while you're drawing it. So um, and this is not a shopping list by the way. This is a um, this is uh, like, it's not step one, step two, step three, think like this, think like this. No. This is an organic process. Organic processes are, um, as they occur to you, as you approach that, that element, that area, you know, you start to think of what is this, what I'm doing. You're analyzing these shapes and thinking about their. Um, their construction, thinking about how they're uh, created for, or how they are uh, subtly um, modeled, right? What does the modeling tell you about the surface? Is it rough? Is it smooth? Is it overhanging uh, the eyeball? And does it have a, in the eyeball, is it responding with a reflection of that element hanging over. So there's a lot of stuff that's in your head while you're drawing. Um, And it's not all chatter. 
Okay, it's not static. Be be aware of that. In a Michelangelo or in in a Einstein, analyzing and thinking and processing, you know that's part of the dialogue. It's as I said, it's not chatter. It's important that you have that dialogue as you as you go along. That's your story, right? You're telling a story about this face. Your story is the process, right? And this this is why drawing is so incredibly um, intense. It's fascinating. It's not hard. I mean, well, a lot of people think you know it is hard. There is a, a difficulty to it, but you know. It's like um, cars are difficult. Cars, driving is difficult, right? It is. You think about it. It's not natural. It's, it's like strange. You get behind this metal machine and you press levers and you know electronics and things and you travel, hurtle down the road. It's not a natural experience, but uh, you accomplish it, you know, and you don't think about it. And oftentimes you like drive along and you, you arrive at your destination and you don't remember how you got there or how many lights there were or what the traffic was. You know, you kind of put all of that, you know, it's kind of taken over by muscle memory in a, in a way. So a lot of the drawing process is, is, is part of that uh, experiential um, Activity rather than mental activity. Again, try to. I'm trying to sort of make sure these lines, because when they put black onto, when you press very very lightly, it does change the warmth of the, cools out the, um, the warmth of the brown pencil. And that warmth you need because it's a human being you're drawing here. So, yeah, that's good. I like that. That's nice. See, these lines are so informative. These little wrinkles, they're so informative. This this man has spent his whole life thinking funny thoughts and um, enjoying life you can tell that you know he he loved life so much and was a very humble and respectful person and it showed in the parts that he played it showed in his personality which came through those parts that he played you know the characters that he played that he invested part of himself into those characters and you could tell that 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 was him he was Mr. Miyagi and um, you know it's like actually spending time with him was a very humbling experience because he's he's honestly he's like a sensei he is he is like you know Mr. Miyagi the the wise um, teacher and um it was a very humbling experience, believe me, to actually meet him. And I was even, I was really, not shocked, but I was really astounded at the level of, of love and respect that strangers afforded him, you know. Um, they just loved him. They really, really loved him. And, um, You know, and I was very, very moved by, by that. So take your time when you're looking at faces, especially um, cultures that you're not, maybe not familiar with drawing. Um, you know, I, you need to you need to look at the reference. You need to look at life. You need to look at them, because 
they tell you so much. They're so incredibly um, relevant to us. Um, drawing Mr. Miyagi's face, I am learning so much about myself. And um, you know, so it's a it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. It's a it's a treasure. It is a treasure. I'm a treasure. That's right. I am. And uh, this is, you know, part of the process. I think about this all the time. That's probably why I'm. <laughs> I don't do many illustrations anymore. I, I tend to think too much. I think too much about a lot of things about the process, about who it is I'm drawing. And, um, you know, I get more value out of this than monetary value. There's no monetary value that can compensate you for the lessons, the life lessons that you're learning. You know, the wonderful things that, that uh, people's faces teach me, show me. Sorry, I bumped the camera. Just got a little bit of a tilt. I've got to tilt this thing up so that I can get... Uh, some beautiful soft hairs here that are very characteristic of this sort of like spun silk. It's really texturally beautiful. Beautiful. And of course you've got these great big um, tufts of uh, wayward hair here and there. This um, fantastic uh, koala bear ear type of um, temp hair coming down from the temple. And very, very characteristic. So it's, it's like, it's not w wild and woolly. It's wild, it is, but it's, it's, it's like a, a garden. So there's some great shapes in, in these hairs. Hairs can be problematic, I won't lie to you, because there's a lot of them, right? There's a lot of lines, okay? Um, and, you know, drawing is best achieved, like, at a speed that you can handle. You can sort of... Um, achieve the details you want to get without too much time spent. Um, so I like to sort of... Some faces are harder than others to get the likeness of. Um, you be the judge whether I've gotten this or not. In some details, I just... I, I, have, to, I have to spend time getting them. You know, it's just such a... I look at this and I, I, I'm really uh, excited about the, the, light, the, sh the light and shade and the story that I'm, I'm actually trying to... Uh, I'm discovering it. I'm discovering it. It's a great um, pleasure to do this. I'm very excited about the process. More, more excited about the process than the result. Um, I'm anxious for the thing to finish, of course, like everybody else, but at the same time, you know, this process of investigating is so, it's so, um, it's so rewarding, really. When you discover things about yourself and about the subject and the process, you know, it's very, um, very interesting. So right now, I'm just building up a sense of uh, contrast, a little bit, sort of. I'm using the brown. I'm referring always back to the reference to see how deep these lines should be or how dark they should be in relevance to the reference. So I'm just um, trying my best to, to be truthful because it is about truth, isn't it? Drawing um, can be about truth. Caricature is about truth about truth sometimes it's a it's a scary truth but 
It's an investigation, right? It's not a photograph, it's an investigation. So, you know, you uncover things during the investigation and sometimes those things you bring to the fore and you exaggerate their, rel their importance, you know, that's part of the, the deal. Um, if you don't want those things coming out, then maybe you shouldn't have a face. I'm just thinking of, you know, politicians, for example, tend to be wary of cartoons and caricatures because they're, they seem to have a lot resting on how people, um, uh, how their impression is, is received by people. And uh, caricatures tend to reveal a lot of things that perhaps they don't want to reveal, or they want to see. So it's sort of like a um, an unexpected lie detector test in a way. So, okay, we're getting close. I've resisted putting in some white pencil here, but I'm going to start doing it now to build up a sense of modeling. So as I've done with the black pencil, I'm going to start to bring in, introduce some shiny accents here and there and some details that will help with the sculptural qualities, the three-dimensional properties of the drawing. So yes, drawings can be three-dimensional. This is the whole concept of this, why you would use color pencils in drawing. Why would you use brown pencil and black pencil and um, you know white as an accent to try to create a sculptural effect you can see it goes it builds up light and reflection from the gray background so I'm actually bringing elements forward in space and um, creating the textural properties Okay, so always looking back and forth to see, you know, well, that's shiny. How shiny? Let's investigate further. Let's see if how, how they can be best expressed with the white pencil. You don't want to make everything white. You just want to make certain accents come forward or be shiny or have a difference, stand out from the gray. Again, you know, looking at... Um, the cross-hatching and hatching uh, process of of pencils and pens, same sort of thing. So, gradually build up um, some shine here. Don't want to get underneath the hair on the chin, a few accents here and there, be good, I'll go back in there with a pen, a white pen, um, shine over here, and shine down the center of the bridge, which is this uh, area here between the head and the nose itself, um, there's a shiny spot here, there's also, you know what I'd like to do is have a rim light effect just over there, just to catch a bit of light and complement it over on the other side. Have another rim light down there. Okay, that's good. I'll keep going, build up the light accents here in there there and here uh, this stage you know I'm zipping back and forth my eyes to the photograph to the reference I'm trying to create a sense of solidity and uh, helping the lines stand out that the ones I want to stand out so looking at their relevance in terms of 
how light or how dark they are and you know are they do they determine shine do they determine texture you know what 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 are they actually saying about the um, that that area so let put that rim light down the side because I think it would be that would complement the um, the shape of the cheek be nice so um, yeah we're getting there nice three-dimensional qualities so we're building up slowly it's pretty good it's nice uh, or a bit of although his hair is quite thin here I think I might put in a little bit of shine just at the top just give it a bit of character okay all right so let's um, hit it with some white pin this is, this is going to make um, quite strong accents so you don't want to put them over everywhere and again if you can blend them in by using maybe some cross hatching like this some hatch lines it kind of makes it a little bit softer okay don't paint the eyes white because eyes are not white look at the reference right um, and determine what things are in their true value without making it up so truth is is how you see these shapes and um, how you respond to them it's a lot of uh, Here's down here catching the catching the light. Nice shapes. Of course the mustache. Got some nice um, accented, long accented hairs, which give it a beautiful soup strainer effect. I like that. That's nice. His eyebrows I think will keep them black. A little bit of shine there. If you press lightly, you get a, a softer effect with the paint brush, with the paint pen. Um, and if you press harder, you get a stronger effect, which is kind of good. It's nice. It's handy to know that <laughs> when you're drawing. So um, let's get a bit of a thicker pin here and I want to build up a little bit of contrast in these because it's such an important feature of his character, these um, koala bear tufts. Okay, so I'm going to paint around the letters in the word balloon so that the word balloon can go back to a pristine, prist, pristine, pristine state of of readability, legibility. I think there's too many lines there. You notice that the paint paint pen doesn't really mix with the brown pencil, so it's really quite opaque and um, can repair a lot of ills if you think of them as ills just changing the importance of the ills sometimes the ills are good you know like happy accidents but 
try to keep them in perspective. Um, see, I've actually lost the arm of the A there. I'll put that back. So I'll try to color within the lines, folks. That's the order of the day. Color within the lines. I can't be more <laughs> simple than that. Put that arm back. There you go. All right. I think uh, we're nearly there. I'm going to start to build up. I'm going to try this paint pen, which I just got today, this black paint pen. And uh, let's see how effective this is. Oh, it's black, isn't it? So, ah, uh, oh, right, okay. It's very nice, got a chisel tip, so I can do cutting in, um, but I don't want to cut in right into the, the lines around the hairs and the, f the head. I want to try to give it a little bit of character. I like those lines, I don't want them to be, I don't want them to be overwhelmed. So, yeah, I think that would probably work. This is about it. This part of it is about as interesting as watching grass grow. I'm, um, I'm cutting in, but not right up to the contour. To the, ch I'm not cutting in right up to the the pencil line I'm giving a little bit of space because I found that if you cut in right up to the line you tend to lose the line it then blends into the background so you've lost the relevance of the thick and the thin or the character of lines themselves so it's always better to I think stay shy of it because the black background is very severe and it's there to create it like a spatial Q. It's like, you know, this is out of space, the final frontier. Um, it's quite a nice uh, pen. I think it might be a little bit too glossy for my liking. I, I, I don't know if I'm happy with that level of shine. I couldn't get any Poskas today, so I'm trying this new product out but it looks to me like it's um it has a varnish in it so I might uh, have to be aware of that and be careful of using it in the future so I hope um You've enjoyed uh, Mr. Miyagi, and um, you know maybe we should watch um, Karate Kid catch up with Karate Kid again, have a nostalgia night. He really is or was a, a, a great hu human. He's a great person, and uh, he's very. Um, sorely missed so here we go down to the end now we're going to write That might be it. I've got a. I might sort of get into the pupils, perhaps, with some black, just to help that contrast. Yeah, this is this is very glossy. 
All right. So um, this is Pat Morita, Mr. Miyagi, and um, this is Franz Cantor um, saying, "I will um, catch you on the flip side." Bye bye. Thank you.